Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a differential equation. Now, why do we call this a differential equation even though we have the integral of something? Because this is going to turn into a differential equation. So we have the integral of x over f of x dx. f of x is a function of x. And that is equal to f of x plus c. Since this is an indefinite integral, we do have a constant c in the answer. Okay? So let's go ahead and see how we can turn this into a differential equation. Now, by using the, is that the fundamental theorem? Some type of theorem allows us to differentiate both sides and get rid of the integral sign. So we're going to go ahead and differentiate both sides. And the, the derivative of the integral of something is that thing, right? which is going to be x over f of x. And since you're differentiating, there's not going to be a constant. It's just going to be what it is. Equals the derivative of f of x plus c. Since c is a constant, uh, its derivative is 0. And the derivative of f of x can be written as f prime of x. All right? So let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit by writing the f of x as y. So set f of x equal to y. And then you can go ahead and write f prime as y prime. Make sense? So under this notation, um, things are going to look a little simpler. No big differences, but, you know, it's going to be a little easier to handle. So we're going to write this as x over y equals y prime. Awesome. This is what I meant by the differential equation that we're going to solve because this is a differential equation. So we kind of have the ratio of x over y, right? Which we can hopefully handle by way of substitution or some other method. Okay, so I'll be presenting two methods. And I haven't tested both methods, but I'm hoping that it's going to work. At least it's going to give us something. So the first method, I kind of want to use substitution. And I do have x over y. So why don't we just replace y with something like I can hopefully call y equals u times x right in this case u is kind of being a different variable and then from here y prime and u is a function of x by the way if you differentiate by the product rule the derivative of u times x plus the derivative of x one times u so in other words y prime can be written as x u prime plus u and then we can go ahead and plug these two things into our equation, can we? Let's go ahead and do it. And that's going to give us what? Well, if y is equal to ux, x over ux is going to give us 1 over u. And that's equal to x u prime plus u. So hopefully this equation is solvable. Let's see what happens. First of all, we can go ahead and cancel out the x's, and this gives us 1 over u, and I could probably multiply everything by u, but before that, actually, this is what I'd like to do. Instead of multiplying like that, let's go ahead and isolate x u prime and write it as 1 over u minus u. I'm hoping that this is going to turn into a separable differential equation. How do I do that? u prime is the derivative of u with respect to x, so I can write that as du over dx, remember u is a function of x, equals 1 over u minus u. By the way, I can go ahead and make a common denominator here and write this as 1 minus u squared divided by u. Awesome. Now, I want to separate the variables, so it looks like a separable equation. Let's go ahead and put all the x terms on one side and all the u terms on the other side. Let's go ahead and pick left-hand side for u, so we're going to get u over 1 minus u squared du equals dx over x. Makes sense because dx is going to be multiplied and x is going to be divided. Now, at this point, we integrate both sides because our goal is to solve for y, which we need to do through u, right? So how do you solve this? Well, here's what I can do. I can go ahead and use substitution one more time because substitution is awesome. Let's go ahead and replace 1 minus u squared with something. Doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and use t. If 1 minus u squared is t, then from here we can kind of get negative 2u, happy birthday, 2u if it's your birthday, equals dt. I don't have that, but I do have u du, so I can kind of 
separate this and write the u du as negative one half dt. So I got these two things. Let's go ahead and substitute into our integral. All right. And that's going to give us the following. u du is going to be negative one half. Let's take that out. dt here over t. Great. Now, we know how to integrate this, don't we? But let's go ahead and set that equal to dx over x first. So I'm going to go ahead and integrate. Left-hand side is with respect to t, which is very easy to integrate. And then we'll back substitute. The integral is going to be ln absolute value of t. Let's just write with absolute value. And this is going to be ln absolute value of x plus a constant. I have to use it, right? Now, obviously, you can go ahead and multiply both sides by negative 2 to get rid of the number, but let's go ahead and back substitute first. What is t? t is 1 minus u squared, so it's going to be 1 half, negative 1 half ln. The absolute value of 1 minus u squared equals ln absolute value of x plus c. And then u can also be back substituted. What is u? u is y over x. Look at that. y is equal to ux, so u is y over x. u is y over x because y is equal to ux. Obviously, x should not be 0, so on and so forth. All those stories. But here, we're going to get we're going to get negative 1 half times ln absolute value of 1 minus y squared over x squared. And then that's equal to ln absolute value of x plus c. So here's a couple of things that you can do. Uh, I mean, no big deal, but you can go ahead and make a common denominator here. And then you can go ahead and separate these, bring the x over, and then try to get to some answer from there. But I think it's okay to leave it at that point. But when we did the second, when we do the second method, you're going to see something slightly different or very different. And why is that happening? As long as I didn't make any mistakes, because I make mistakes, as you know. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. Now. Our integral was x over f of x dx equals f of x plus c. It's kind of like an interesting function f of x we're trying to find that when you multiply x by that function and integrate, you get the same function plus a constant. Okay. Now, again, we're going to differentiate both sides. Same idea. And that's going to give us x over f of x. What happened to dx? It just evaporates uh, along with the uh, integral sign equals f prime. And then I'm going to use the same thing, x over y equals y prime. Now, this is already a separable differential equation. Why do you need to go to great lengths and turn this into u? Because it's fun, it's an alternative method, right? We're not going to do that now. Let's go ahead and do the separation right away. I can go ahead and write this as dy over dx, right? And then I can put the x's together and the y's together. Let's go ahead and do it y dy equals x dx. From here, we can go ahead and integrate both sides easily, right? This is going to be y squared over 2. Remember, that's how we integrate powers. Um, and on the right-hand side, I want to use my constant. You don't have to use it twice because the difference of two constants is also a constant. Anyways, I can multiply both sides by 2, which is going to help. And 2k can be replaced with a constant. How about calling that c sub 1. I don't want to use the c because I use it with the first method, and I actually really want to be able to compare it to the first method. Remember what we got for the first method? Negative 1 half ln something something, right? <laughs> Let's see what we're going to get with this. This is going to be a lot simpler. And obviously from here, there are two possible answers, and I'm going to show you what Wolfram Alpha gave me when I try to solve it, uh, just to check my work. Uh, one of them is going to be this because you just square root it. But of course, there are two square roots, plus minus, And of course, you could also put the plus minus sign there. Now, think about one of these solutions. Let's take this one, this positive one. Do you think that's going to satisfy the equation? Think about it. y equals the square root of x squared plus c sub 1. And if you plug it in, think about y squared. That's going to be x squared plus a constant. 1 minus that divided by x squared, ln, and then plug it in and see if that's actually going to work. All right? Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the Wolfram Alpha results. Uh-oh. Wolfram Alpha get the same thing. 
Good job, good job. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.